Wednesday night, you and I are out in Abbotsford. Game three, Abbotsford Canucks are facing elimination against the Calgary Wranglers. Chris, what happened in that game? Because we're still here, and as you can see on the ticker, folks, staying alive is our yeah. headline. Uh, 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 staying alive. Get it up, Alex. Look at that. It's the Abbotsford Canucks staying alive. They're down 2 nothing. coming back to Abbotsford. Looking good. Look at this. The two goalies leading the way, of course. Artie and Marty. Come on. That's got to be – how do you not capitalize on that with some content? The Abbotsford Canucks got to get going on that good content team. But, yep, staying alive, uh, playing good. Hey, listen, what do they say about playoff series? It's not a series until you win on the road. Might not even happen like that. Abbotsford's got to win these last three games. they got two more games now. But uh, goals from Linus Carlson, that was huge, right? Like getting that power play goal that early from Linus Carlson was great. I felt like that set a good mood for the, for the group because Carlson did this all season long. He was a power play guy in front, net front. Hadn't done anything up to this point in the uh, AHL playoffs over the four games that they've played already. That's the first series and the second series. It was great to see him find the back of the net, and he did it the way that that I think is so impressive. Like, you you see this now, Quads, and I heard this from some people that uh, shot me some DMs who were at the game yesterday. They're like, hey, Linus Carlson's big. I'm like, yeah, like, he's big. He's tough. He's uh, I've mentioned it before. Like, the reason he's wearing the bubble all season long is because he's getting in guys' faces. He's getting punched in the face all season long. Uh, but you get an early goal from him on the power play. That was huge. Christian Wallanen finally getting some offense going. I know he got a lucky bounce, but uh, to get him on the scoreboard was also great for them. And then I, I have to say, and, and we saw this, I was for Canucks. They sent out a tweet, big goals from Carlson and Wallanen last night. They forgot about Kyle Rao. Was that, that, that was the biggest goal of the game. It's a game winning goal, Kyle Rao in the third period. And that was how crucial of a goal is that? Because quads, let's remember how this second period ended. A five-on-three opportunity for the Abbotsford Canucks. They do not score on that. Right after that, Niels Huglander, we'll talk about him a little bit more. He takes that slashing penalty. They go to, and then Calgary goes to work on the power play to, to close out that second period. They don't score. And it felt like that was a real time right there after that intermission. Calgary could have came back in that game and really pushed. It was a 2-1 game going into the third period. Then early on, a minute 10 into that third period, you get a goal from Kyle Rao huge goal for this team right like huge goal for this team i wanted to mention this about Rao. he's so he's leading the abbotsford canucks now in points he's tied with niels huglander uh throughout the playoffs here but let me get you this stat up niels huglander five points in five games kyle Rao, five points in five games niels huglander eight minor penalties in five games kyle Rao, nothing he's playing he, this is the, the like we talk about the young players on this team so much and it's the exciting part it's the guys who are going to play you know in the nhl hopefully at some point but Kyle Rao's a real good piece to have. 30-year-old guy who's been around. He's got some NHL experience. He's been in the AHL a lot more throughout his career. But for him to come out five points in five games, no penalty minutes, just been a solid top six guy. He's been that all season long for this Abbotsford team. He's been a real guy who just kind of fits in that top six. He's not going to come out of there. He's a guy you trust both ways. Like, you, you saw him at the end of the game last night. He was getting so many shifts late in that third period because they trusted him. They trust him, and he's a guy that I think this group really trusts, right? Like, he's a veteran player who brings a lot to the organization down there in Abbotsford. I uh, just wanted to give him a shout-out, because that goal yesterday ends up becoming the game winner. I, I thought without that goal, that game would have been real tight to watch, right? Like, the last third period there, we saw the Wranglers pushing. I, I did like how Abbotsford pushed, though, too. Like, they pushed in that third period, but that goal from Rao, like, they really needed that, and I think that really, that set the barn on fire, right? Like, that had to be the biggest uh, celebration in the game, to get that two-goal lead early in the third period. Uh, and then they took that game to bed last night uh, with a nice 3-2 finish uh, in that one. And give them credit. Shut down the Calgary Wranglers in the final 10 minutes when the Wranglers were only down by a goal. And they were pressing. Like, they were pressing very hard. And look, you give a shout out to Kyle Rao, of course. I don't know why he wasn't mentioned in the tweet, especially when the, uh, Christian Wallanen was referred to as a Canucks prospect along with Linus Carlson. Canucks prospects, Linus Carlson. Uh, and Christian Willanen score some goals is what the tweet said. Willanen's 28 years old. We're not going to get into all that. But, yeah, Kyle Rao deserves some respect there. Posting in, you heard the ping, you saw the celebration. I was taking videos of the fans and every uh, every goal that went in. That's kind of my duty when we go out there to Abbotsford, so it's on the Twitter account. But give them credit for shutting that game down because, look, like I wrote the four keys to victory. Um prior to that game actually i wrote it in the car part of it uh on our long drive into abbotsford thanks to that accident on highway one and oh. all four of them like i'm just gonna quickly go through them because all four of them it was it was almost like check 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 and 
although these games were very close through games one and two and the Canucks were right there, right? Like that's what I actually led off with was they were right there. Like both of these games go to overtime. Um, they don't need to change much, but they do need to change a couple things. This is what I wrote. Number one, stay out of the box. Looking at you, Niels Hoaglander. Sure enough, that happened. They stayed out of the box, limited the Calgary power plays. Um, again, it's hard not to beat your previous best, which was seven. Seven was uh, what they gave up in game two. So you needed to do a little bit better than that. The next one, don't force the goalies to be great. Archer Silovs and Spencer Martin have been good in this series. Haven't been spectacular against Bakersfield. Like they were fine against Bakersfield. The defense in front of them was really good against Calgary. And I'm sorry, I misspoke a second ago against Calgary. I, I think both goaltenders have been exceptional, uh, at least in games one and two last night. I thought Spencer Martin was fine. That second goal beat him. Did probably wants that one back, to be honest with you. It wasn't really a good goal to give up, especially protecting a lead late. And he spoke about it. The guys in front of him shutting down the game, they deserve a ton of credit. The goalie last night, Spencer Martin, didn't have to be great for Abbotsford to get that win. The next one, score a power play goal. Sure enough, that happens. Linus Carlson, as you mentioned, 10 minutes in. And let's not forget, the Wranglers actually opened the scoring in that game in the first three minutes. Um, and all of a sudden, the Abbotsford Canucks are down in that game. Look, that's a huge goal to score. You've talked about it a lot. Linus Carlson, big goal. And then, of course, the fourth one, the Abbotsford home crowd. How much did we hear last night? Who did we talked to? We talked to Colleton. We talked to Carlson, uh, Rathbone, Willannon. All of them spoke about the crowd. Colleton said it helps us big time. He talked about the importance of the home crowd, and Abbotsford didn't disappoint last night. We didn't expect them to, but look, it was a Wednesday night. You thought, okay, well, Wednesday nights are usually pretty quiet, especially you know uh, for non-NHL level hockey. Usually a pretty quiet night. It was not quiet last night, and that place was nearly sold out. Like you, you were hard pressed to find an empty seat in that barn last night. Friday's going to be a big game. Same sort of deal.